And welcome back, AP Calc BC students. Mr. Record here from Avon. We are talking about logistic differential equations, ready to write, wind down the topic with our second to last video. And maybe you're happy about this, by far the shortest video that depicts this wonderful topic in logistic differential equation problem solving. And of course, a very prominent BC exam only topic. So we're in topic 7.9 and we're using my guided notes, which you can access using the link below in the description. We're gonna talk about our example three and our example four. Now, if you recall from a previous video, we talked about the general forms of these logistic differential equations, which are in that box right below. So you want to be very, very familiar with those two forms. And I'm not just talking about the orange one, the logistic differential form, but that one next to it in blue is also going to be very important as well, as that one is very prominently featured in this particular example. We talked about how in either form, the value L represents the carrying capacity, right? The highest value that your population Y, or in this case, P, in our most of our application examples will take on. And then most importantly, especially for this example three and four, the logistic growth curve will always increase the fastest when the curve reaches half of that carrying capacity, half of that value of L. And if a lot of these, uh, you know, tidbits are bothering you a little bit and you hadn't had a, ch a chance to check out any of the previous three videos, be sure to check those out because uh, it'll make this a, a lot more understandable. So let's read our example number three. It says the spread of an infectious disease to workers on a large floor of an office building is modeled by this logistic differential equation. We've got P of T equivalent to 800 over 1 plus 16 e to the negative 0.5 T power. So as you can see, that certainly takes the form of our L over one plus BECT. T is the number of days. P of T represents the number of infected people, much like our zomb <clears throat> excuse me, our zombie infestation, getting choked up there, our zombie infestation activity that I used in video one. The graph of P of T is shown below. What is the number of infected people when the rate at which the disease is spreading the fastest? So as we said, the very first thing that one would need to do is extract the value of L immediately. Understand that L would be this numerator while you're in this form. We don't need the B of 16 or the K value of 0.5. Those aren't important. If L, our carrying capacity is 800, then according to this statement, logistic growth will occur the fastest when we reach half of that value. And half of that value is certainly going to be 400. Now, we see that that is our answer C, and, and that's the one that we're gonna go with. But I'd like to kind of emphasize this a little bit more using the picture that 400 would occur right here. And at that point, you can notice that we change concavity. It might be kind of subtle but we are concave up along this stretch, and then we would switch to being concave down the rest of the way. And so this point right here, we can also call a point of inflection. So a point of inflection is where your logistic growth curve will increase the fastest. Now, there is another way that this problem could be posed that could make things just a little bit trickier. What if it asked you, on what day or, or when would we have occurred this most rapid increase? And that's where you would have to use technology. You'd have to use your graphing calculator and you would essentially go up to this equation and you would replace the P of T with 400 and proceed to solve for T. Show you what that would look like here just really quickly. All right. so. Well, where am I? Where am I? Here I am. I'm up here. Hi, guys. <laughs> so I'm using the TI Inspire calculator to do this. You could do this with a TI-83 or a TI-84 or virtually any graphing calculator. But I just chose the original differential equation as my first function that I graphed. Put it in your Y1 menu or your F1 of X menu. And then I graphed the other side, the 400, the actual uh, uh, population 
uh, where I'm increasing the fastest. And then basically you would just have to find this point of intersection, which pretty easy thing to do. Um, on the, uh, whoops, on the, uh, let's, let's, let's get to that again here, guys. On the uh, TI Inspire, you would hit Menu, and then you would choose Analyze Graph, and we're looking for an intersection here. And you just simply uh, use your cursor to position your bar to the left of the intersection for your lower bound. And in no time at all, you should come up with that point. Uh, on the TI Inspire, if you need more decimal places, make sure you hover over that X coordinate and hit the plus button so you can get some more decimal values. And so we would say at time T equal 5.545. And it's that easy to do. If the extension to the problem wants to know when, it's likely that you're going to have a calculator to use. Anyway, I hope that helped in that particular situation. Now, let's take a look at example four. Now, this being our final multiple choice question, is going to still stay focused on the theme of when our population tends to increase the fastest. But it's going to ask it in a little bit different light. It says, the rate at which natural gas is being extracted from an underground reserve at time t satisfies the differential equation. So we have dg over dt is 0.04 g quantity 1 minus g over 64. g is measured in thousands of cubic feet. t is measured in weeks. For what value of g is the extraction rate increasing the fastest? So there we go. We want that same idea. We need to find half of the carrying capacity. The difference about this problem is we presented the equation in its differential equation form and not its solution form as we did in example three. And so you'd have to be very cognizant of about where is the L value. And you'll notice I didn't provide the box that has all of the formulas there. And so you have to think about, okay, where is the L in the general form of the differential equation? And that would be this guy right here. Now you gotta make sure that you have your one minus dependent variable over L form before you can make that decision. But 64 is going to be the carrying capacity. And then of course, half of that 64 is going to be the 32. And that is your answer. For this particular problem. So you can see how simple it can be as long as you have a very strong concrete knowledge of the forms of both the differential equation and the actual solution curve. Hope this video helped. We got one more left. We're going to talk about a full-blown free response question using logistic differential equation in our next example. Hope you check it out. In the meantime, take care and keep studying your calculus.